Seraphine is one of the latest additions to the League of Legends. Despite having one of the most hyped up champion releases in the game's history, many players were quite disappointed when her kit was officially revealed. As the second champion to feature a musically themed kit, her abilities almost look exactly the same as Sona's. Her passive enhances her autos, her W provides a heal and a shield just like Sona, and they even have both similarly designed ultimates. But even though Seraphine and Sona look so similar on the surface, their identities as champions couldn't be that much more different. Let's break down how Sona and Seraphine are not quite the same champion. To better understand what makes Seraphine just so different from Sona, we need to recognize the role that each champion plays within a team and why even though these two champions sound so similar, they can feel so different. Although both champions are designed to be backliners, the way they play out fights in the backline is one big differentiator between them. Sona is very focused around her auras and strengthening her teammates in order to win a fight, whereas Seraphine wants her team to play around her as she can be the key to winning one. Seraphine's ultimate, although slower than Sona's in speed, has an incredible amount of range, allowing you to easily line it up with a majority of the enemy team. It also sets up super easily with her other abilities, meaning that you'll be able to hard CC lock the entire enemy team for up to 3 seconds. In addition, because Seraphine is still primarily a control mage, she'll carry much more upfront damage than Sona and will constantly be looking for more opportunities to poke and chunk out the enemy. At its core, the differences in the way Seraphine Seraphine's abilities are used and their best use cases are going to be what differentiates her from Sona. She was also designed to be a mid laner, but since this is an e girl champion, many players have already been playing her in the support role as well. This means that we'll be able to break down how Seraphine's abilities can be used in both of these scenarios. Let's start with exactly what's so similar between Sona and Seraphine in their kit. Both of these champions have passives that enhance auto attacks, they both have an AoE shield and heal, a movement speed buff, and a big AoE CC as their ultimates. Both of their kits also provide a bonus on their third spell cast. Now, if you look at this list, this would have to mean that these two champions have a ton in common, and you'd honestly be right. These champions are similar in design, and it's hard to deny that fact, but everything changes once it comes to actually using them. Starting with their passives, we can start to see some of the differences between these two champs. They are both auto attack enhancers that revolve around their spell cast, but they have different use case scenarios. The biggest difference you'll find is that Seraphine will be able to use more her passive much more easily than Sona's. Unlike Sona's passive, Seraphine will gain 25 attack range on her autos per note that her and her allied champions have, and her spells will grant a note to all allies within 800 range. This translates into being able to poke out opponents with your auto attacks from miles away. Sona's power cord, while potentially providing more utility than Seraphine's passive, is severely bottlenecked by her 550 attack range. Most of the time, she won't even be able to land the auto attack because if she were to walk up that close to a target, she'll just get blown up instantly. Seraphine won't have this issue because she gets so much free range, she can poke with her autos all the way from the back line. It's insane. It's basically rapid fire cannon on steroids. In addition to their auto attack enhancements, although both Sona and Sarah make use of a 3 spell mechanic in order to buff their kits, they have extremely different use cases. For Sona, her 3 spell mechanic was already the auto attack enhancer, so there isn't much else to it. Seraphine's echo spell mechanic is much more creative and allows the person playing Seraphine to have an incredible impact in fights in multiple ways. On every third spell cast, Seraphine's next spell will be casted twice, and each spell gets nice bonuses based on whether or not Seraphine is using its echoed version. Echo Q will synergize with itself because it has execute damage, her W allows her to have a better AoE version of Sona's W and E combined in one ability, and her E will convert her AoE slow into an AoE snare. The echo mechanic is one of the biggest things that makes Seraphine feel so different from Sona because it drastically changes how she can interact throughout the game. Sona's power cord is a good complement to Sona's kit, whereas Seraphine's echo is what defines her kit. Good Seraphine players will constantly be keeping up the correct spell to echo in order to best set up her team with, whether it's getting off more poke or damage with Q, providing that backline stat ball with her W, or setting up engage with her e. One interesting thing about Seraphine's spells is that although they can get strengthened by using its echoed version, by having your item build or your team comp built around her, she can sort of cheat the system. Each of her spells are designed to synergize with themselves when they're echoed, but Seraphine does not necessarily need to echo them in order to receive the bonus effects. In order to better explain this, let's first look at her W, Surround Sound. By itself, her W will grant her and her allies bonus movement speed and a shield. If Seraphine is already shielded when she casts Surround Sound, she'll also grant a missing health heal with a similar form to Redemption. The echo effect works by first giving her the shield on the first cast and then providing a heal on the second. But how about if Seraphine was already shielded before casting? If your teammates draft champions that have shields built into their own kits like Janna or Ivern, she can get direct access to the heal of her W without burning her echo charge. The same can apply to her E, Beat Drop. If shot raw into an enemy champion, the ability is just an AoE slow. 
However, if her team sets her up with other CC like slows, Beat Drop goes from a slow to the snare. And if the enemies are hard CC already, Beat Drop becomes a giant AoE stun. If she has a team that's built well around her, Seraphine will be able to have her echo abilities up essentially all the time and can single-handedly win fights with her high impact abilities. This is a huge contrast from how Sona plays out fights as she focuses on being able to buff her team and have them do all of the carrying in her stead. Let's also talk about Sona's and Seraphine's ultimates, because again, although they look like they do similar things, the ways in which they can be used are completely different. Both Sona's and Seraphine's ultimates are excellent CC tools that allow players to control fights with their massive AoE. While Sona's ultimate does a great job of being a starting engage for a big fight, Seraphine shines best as a secondary engage to back up your team. Encore, being Seraphine's version of Sona ult, trades off the speed that Crescendo has, but instead gives it an insane amount of range. Encore starts off at 1200 range, but when you hit any allied or enemy champion, the range of it can extend by an additional 1200. If you ever wanted to snipe people across the screen with Crescendo, apparently that's possible now. After hitting Encore, Seraphine will easily be able to hit her E to basically CC lock entire teams in fights. In spite of the massive range discrepancy, this is still likely where we see the most similarities between these two champions, as both abilities have similar use case scenarios. When looking at their kits as a whole, it's not hard to see that Seraphine will have a very different power curve than Sona. Seraphine was designed as a mid lane control mage and therefore has tools in her kit that allow her to succeed in that lane. Her Q and E are excellent wave clear tools and she has a lot of setup in her kit. Thanks to her auras and overwhelming amount of hard CC, Seraphine has also seen some success in the support role. The difference in their kits also highlights the difference in their effectiveness throughout the game. Sona is a very underwhelming champion in the early game and takes at least 15 to 20 minutes to come online, whereas Seraphine can be useful as early as level 1. But this does not mean that Sona isn't useful. If the game does make it into the later stages and Sona is able to get some more items, her greatly reduced cooldowns and consistent auras will make her a stronger champion in the late game. But this further emphasizes how just how different of an experience playing Seraphine will be when compared to Sona. It's undeniable that both Sona and Seraphine have a similarities with each other in both their character design and when you read their abilities at first glance. However, when it comes to playing these champions in practice, they honestly couldn't really be more different. They are given similar looking tools, but the way they use them drastically changes how these champions are played. If these champions were in a song, Sona would be the background music and Seraphine would be the core melody, the face of the song. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video please sub and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh.